So if you've been here for any amount of time, you know that I do work with print-on-demand companies like Printful. One of the things that I have been trying to expand my realm in is the all-over print shirts or pillows or whatever. One of the things that I have not dabbled into, but I keep getting asked by some of my female friends and followers, Dave, when are you gonna do some leggings? I've been a little bit intimidated because I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to create an all-over print in a repeating pattern using my work. And uh, I thought, well, you know what? We're gonna do this. Let's get it done. Let's figure it out. So this is repeating patterns in Affinity Photo. Let's go. What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Connery. I'm an artist designer based in Southern California. And today we are talking about the repeat, the all over print on the things that you like to wear. Maybe not necessarily you, but somebody likes to wear things that have repeating patterns. I have friends who have been asking me to do something of mine in this. And I thought, you know what? It's time for me to figure this out. And so we're gonna look into Affinity Photo how to do this, and I figured it out already. I figured it all out already, but I wanted to share it with you because there wasn't a whole lot of information about this. A lot of people are doing it in Affinity Designer, but what if you don't want to work in Designer? What if you want to work strictly in Affinity Photo? I got you covered. What we have here on the screen is a blank white square. There's a reason behind this, folks. It's important that if we're going to build something as a repeating pattern, it needs to be two things. Number one, uh, it needs to be reasonably good size. You can see here, if I hit Command, Control or Command Option I, excuse me, 5,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels. That's probably bigger than I need it to be. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I've already done this video once and I think that maybe the size has actually <laughs> caused me to crash once, but we're gonna keep moving forward. This is gonna be a repeating pattern. It really doesn't need to be that big. Let's say if we're gonna put it on a pair of leggings, it really could, probably could be like closer to 3,000 pixels and maybe even smaller than that. I'd rather build it bigger because some of these elements that you're gonna see here in a minute could be used for other things in the future. And so I'm just gonna leave it at this size and then we'll figure out resizing for the actual product that we make later on. Other thing that you need to do is you need to make sure this is a one by one ratio. The reason that is is because of what we have to do in the process here with the affine tool or the affine filter is that it needs to be a a ratio that you can manage. And one by one is just the easiest ratio to manage for what we're going to do. This will make more sense in a second. Now, it's not just a blank page. Obviously, I've got a bunch of layers over here. And if I start showing you all these different things that I've drawn with my handy dandy Huion tablet pen right here that I've been playing with, I am not the most astounding illustrator. In fact, I'm not even really astounding at anything. Anyway, so I did a bunch of items here like these dots, these hashtags, stars, lines, squiggles, my ubiquitous skull that you will find in a lot of different things that I do. And then this phrase, memento mori, which means remember your death. More importantly, remember that your death might be coming. So live for today. Live today like it could be the last. This is not YOLO, like you only live once. Not that. This is like, hey, listen, death could be coming tomorrow. Take every opportunity to do the things that you need to today. It's an idea that I subscribe to and I recommend it for other people and it, it usually is associated with some sort of skull imagery and so we're gonna put those two together right here on a pair of pants. So I have all these things grouped and I have them as individual items as well. You can see as I start to take these away. I have them like that because I'm gonna be using individual things here in just a bit, but first things first, what I need to do is I need to create a separate layer that is all of these things combined. This fill layer is actually, it's actually just a fill that's transparent background. I'm probably going to use a transparent background later on, but I'll explain to you why I need to do this. First, I need to have a completely flattened layer that has all of these elements, including the fill. So I'm gonna go Command Option Shift E, I know that's up here in the toolbar somewhere, but I forget where it is and we, I'm not wasting time with that. Command Option Shift E takes all the layers you currently have, flattens them and puts them on its own separate layer. So I'm gonna label this flat, flat layer. Now I'm leaving it also black and white because I could change that background color layer if I wanted to, but what I really wanna do is at a certain point, once I have the pattern established, once I have the identity of the image established, the way I want rather, then I am going to extract everything that's black out of the white background and then make that the transparent background so that I can put that information onto any color that I want to, whether it's a yellow or blue or purple or stars or 
skull, more skulls, I don't know, it could be anything, but I want to have a transparent background then, but right now, can't do that, I need this, this is important because that one-to-one -one ratio is essential for what I'm going to do right now. Go up here to the filters, under distort, into a fine, second from the bottom, it always drops that palette down there, I don't know why, you don't need to change the rotation, but you do want it to be at 90 degrees no matter what you do. So if it's 90, you know, 180, 360, not negative 90, whatever, you can do that. You can move those, but I wouldn't go anything other than 90. Personal opinion, personal thoughts. Uh, we don't necessarily want to scale it. We could if we wanted to, but I, we're not going to do that for this. So I'm just going to go a 50% offset in both directions. And as you can see, Wrap is selected right now. That's kind of the default, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that wrap is the default. If I were just to repeat it, it just basically repeats what I had before, but a 50% offset in both directions. It just essentially moved it that way. And then mirror is like that. We don't want that. We want wrap. Oops. Why didn't it work? There we go. Not sure what happened there. Glitch in the system. Command S. Save often. I've been down this road already today. So as you can see, the it looks like it basically got cut up into four pieces and then put in different corners. There's also this big cross space in the middle here that just feels empty. And when you go to transport that into a pattern, it is going to look empty. It's going to look weird. So what I want to do is I want to take some of these elements that I have over here and repeat them. So I'm going to, you can't see it, but that skull is back there. So I'm going to copy that skull. I'm going to bring it to the forefront up here. And it's obviously way bigger than I need and I don't necessarily want it to be the same size or in that same repetition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the size. I'm going to change it a little bit. Just a little bit. I don't necessarily want it to be... Actually, I think I'm going to move that one in a different spot. So I'm going to change this. Move it over here, and I'll explain what I was just talking, what I was just mumbling to myself there in just one second. Constraint is already on. I can adjust this. I'm not touching any keys when I do this. It's just doing it. It's constrained. If I were to hold the shift key, it would give me a non-constrained. I don't want that. Or if I was hold a uh, uh, command and shift, it, it expands like that. Uh, you know, if you need to, but uh, we're not doing that. So I'm gonna go that there. So we've got one. We've got one down. But I want another one, so I'm going to option and drag, and that creates another one. I can also do that but by a command J, creates another one. And as you can see, they're all right now, they're all about the same in identity, but I don't necessarily want that. I do want to make this one a little bit smaller. I'm going to make it significantly smaller. And I'm going to place these guys in little random places. Maybe he could go right there. Just move them around a little bit, okay? But I don't want just these guys looking all this one direction. I'm gonna take this one, option drag, then I'm gonna go up here to arrange, and I'm going to flip horizontally. And so I'm gonna put this one kind of up in here at a decent distance from this other thing. And then do another small version of him. Maybe not the same small version as before, Maybe put him in the middle here, but like this. Okay, so in this next section, I'm just gonna speed through this, a really quick time lapse of all the things that I'm doing. Just understand that the idea here is it's it doesn't matter what these elements are. I've got a lot of different elements on the page. The elements don't matter. What matters is the spatial relationship. What matters is what's going to look good. And I may end up doing all of this, all of this work that I do, that you're gonna see here in just a second, I may end up getting through this and then get to the point where it's time for me to change the pattern back to where it was before and then understand that I was like, nope, that didn't work. And it's just one of these things that uh, you kinda of have to go, you know, experiment as you go. Uh, we'll see what happens, but um, here we go. Let's Perfect. see, this, this, just watch the screen.
I have a ton, like between these two groups of layers, I got so much going on and I don't really need all of this going on. This is creating a huge file. I don't know what the size of the file is right now, but it's gigantic. I know for a fact it's a gigantic file and I don't need it that big because I wanna get through this without it crashing anymore. What I'm going to do, is I'm gonna take all of these elements here. I'm gonna select that flat layer, and I'm gonna take all of these elements here, I'm gonna group them down, and then I'm gonna rasterize, and actually, you know what I'm doing before I even do that, because this is important, this is an important thing. I need you guys to understand something here. I'm gonna select all, and then I'm going to right click and rasterize and trim. Because as you saw, let me back that up one step. You can see there's elements off the page right now. And that's probably because of the things that I added and brought to the, the foreground. So I don't want that. I want to trim to the actual size. Remember what I was saying? Like the, the size relationship, the one-to-one -one relationship is what's going to make this work. So rasterize and trim. So I have a solid one-to-one -one ratio here. Fingers crossed, this sometimes doesn't work, but I'm gonna go back, I'm on that layer. Make sure you're on the right layer. Go back up to filter, go back to distort and affine. Let's bring this up so we can see it here. Again, not gonna change any of the settings and this time I'm gonna go negative 50 and negative 50 apply. Our hero image is back. All these other elements are here. It looks pretty cool. I want to show you something even more. Bring up my guides. I've got a I've got a, the guides set up here to quarter out. I'm going to duplicate this real quick. I'm going to get rid of that one, but I'm going to show the top one because I want to show you something. I'm going to drag it there. Let's get rid of that and that. So essentially what I did is I just took this and I reduced it down. Took the big full full image and reduced it down. Now I'm just gonna click option drag. This is the easy way, command J, drag, get rid of the grid so you can see it. Repeating pattern. Does it work? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. The one thing about this that is a little weird to me, that just feels a little bit strange and I'm probably gonna have to work this out because this is obviously my first go. I feel like these Memento Mori and the big skull, the hero skull, I feel like those need to be shifted as well. So I almost feel, almost feel like what I should have done is created just a document initially with those as some sort of repeating element and then added all this other stuff on top. So that way I could move them around they could still be the hero, and then everything else gets pushed on top of that. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but this is it, folks. This is it. This is everything that uh, you needed to know about repeating patterns. A fine 50% one-to-one -one ratio, make the image large. Also, the spatial relationship between all these elements. And of course, me just saying what I just said, spatial relationship is a little weird. You tell me, what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below about what you thought about this process. If I, uh, you know, if I nailed it, if I need to redo it, if I should fix it, or what I would, what you would change to make this better, or what you're gonna do to do your thing. Uh, do that, comment below, and while you're headed down there, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and make sure you turn on notifications because you never wanna miss any of this. And then of course, share this with all your creative homies. So that's it for July, folks, this is it. I Like I said in the last video, this is the one of eight. <laughs> for July. I did eight videos in July. I think I did eight videos in June too. And we're going back to the once a week in August. Just to test if I don't see any vastly different numbers on my analytics as far as like what's better, what's worse, uh, then in September or late August, we'll make a judgment about whether I should do one video a week or two videos a week or 16 videos a week. That's not going to happen. While I'm asking, what do you think? How many videos a week would you watch of me? I know I'm probably signing my own death warrant there, but there you go. Tell me in the comments. <laughs> That's gonna do it, folks. I hope you appreciated this. Let me know what you thought. Uh, and until next time, remember, be good today, be even better tomorrow. See ya. Matchy matchy.